Ambassador Flema, Education Minister Professor Courage, uh, Vice Rectors, um, colleagues and friends of FSPAC community, thank you for being a part of this special moment and welcome to the School of Political Science, Public Administration and Communication at Babesh Boya University. Ambassador Clem, we are very happy that you will deliver a speech here today. Uh, I will tell you why we are happy. Besides the fact that we are usually happy, we have particular reasons today to be happy. Uh, this school was established more than 20 years ago with the support of a grant founded by the U.S. government for Babish Boya University, Warsaw University, and Kovinius University in Budapest. The idea behind this grant was to help the development of social science in post-communist countries. We started with three professors, 40 students, a lot of enthusiasm, and a huge support from U.S. universities. Today, our school, FSPAC, offers undergraduate, graduate, and PhD programs in political science, public administration, communication, and PR, journalism, and public health in Romanian, Hungarian, German, and English languages. We have now 14 undergraduate and graduate programs which are fully taught in English. In the last 20 years, hundreds of Romanians and American students and professors travel from U.S. to Cluj and from Cluj to the U.S., more than 60% of our professors attended some kind of educational program in the U.S. Some of our professors are associated to American universities. We have American professors teaching here in our school on a regular basis. Romanian and American students from the University of Delaware worked in teams doing comparative research and presenting common final papers. We established together with Michigan State a transatlantic institute for public management and sustainable communities that helps Romanian communities to develop and increase our outreach activities. We established together with University of Georgia an educational hub for transitional societies in order to use our successful U.S.-Romanian experience to help societies in transition. Recently, our school, together with Florida International University, provided training for Cuban public officials. We offer training programs in public management and communication for Romanian public officials with dual certification together with Michigan State University and University of Georgia. And we have now for 11 years a Master of Public Administration that offers a dual degree with Michigan State. The problem with international grants is that when the money stops coming, there is a big chance that everything stops. That was not our experience here. Our partner to, what partnership with Michigan State, University of Georgia, University of Delaware, Florida International University has continued to work and is still working today. So, Ambassador Clem, here are some reasons for us to be happy to have you here. Welcome again. Please, the floor is yours. Domnule Rector, Domnule Professor, Students at Universitatsi Babish Boliai, Va mulțumesc pentru disponibilitatea de a mă primi. Sunt foarte bucuros să mă aflu aici pentru a discuta despre viața a doi prezidenți americani. Now, if you let me speak in English. <laughs> Mr. Minister, thank you very much for joining me and us uh, today. It's a, a tremendous honor. Thank you. Um, what I would like to do is uh, spend some time uh, reflecting on um, leadership after uh, my remarks uh, that we have a, a period for questions and, and answers. I would very much uh, like to hear uh, your questions and your comments, and I think that would, will be a more interesting part of, of this morning's uh, opportunity. Last week, February 15th, uh, was a national holiday in the United States, um, President's Day, a, a holiday that uh, we have established to uh, remember um, those who have served as a President of the United States. We used to have two uh, holidays in February, uh, one honoring uh, the birth of President Washington, our first President, and then another, um, later in the month, honoring the birth of Abraham Lincoln, our 16th uh, president. And then about 20 years ago, we decided uh, to merge those two holidays uh, into just one, uh, usually the, the second, I believe, uh, Monday of, of, of February. And then we took the other holiday and we uh, designated it in January as Martin Luther King Day. Uh, so now we uh, still honor and reflect upon our, our presidents in, uh, in February, 
And, and then we have an opportunity in January to think about the life of Martin Luther King. But what is most important to keep in mind um, is um, those two presidents, President Washington and President Lincoln, uh, two very distinguished Americans who came from very divergent backgrounds um, but saw themselves in the end as humble public servants with a solemn obligation to their country, to serve their country. George Washington was born into the aristocracy in colonial Virginia. Uh, from his father, he inherited a very large plantation uh, called Mount Vernon. It's, um, if you ever have a chance to visit the Washington, D.C. area, I would encourage you to visit Mount Vernon, not only for its historic um, uh, antecedents, but also for the great beauty that that location still enjoys. Washington served in the British colonial army, fought in the French and Indian War, and when the United States decided to break away from Great Britain, he was made commander-in-chief of the Continental Army. He was victorious. The army was victorious. And under his leadership, we defeated the mighty British Empire. Washington resigned his military commission and then was called back into service by being elected unanimously, the only time this has happened in our history, uh, to the office of the President of the United States. During his tenure, Washington set many precedents, such as making an inaugural address when being sworn in as president. Uh, he rejected any titles of nobility, preferring instead to simply be called Mr. President. And he created for the first time the, the cabinet, uh, uh, governance by, by cabinet. Although the American people and politicians called on him to continue governing, he voluntarily served only two terms in office, a limit which would later be made uh, into law. President Washington understood the responsibilities of his position and the need to be an example for future occupiers of the office of president. He presided over a crucial time in America as everything was being newly created. The capital, the currency, the government, the establishment of foreign relations, the structure and direction of the economy. It is also very important to note that these were the first years of the newly written Constitution. So there are major questions. Would the envisioned separation of powers, legislative, judicial, and administrative, be successful? Would the checks and balances that are central to the functioning of the American government, envisioned by the drafters of the Constitutions, actually work in practice? Would the guaranteed rights of the individual that are uh, enshrined not only in their Declaration of Independence, but again in the U.S. Constitution, would those rights be protected? Would they remain? The nation began with 13 different colonies having been founded separately under the British Empire. They united in battle against the British, but would they remain united in peace? Would their rights, the rights of the states, be respected? That answer to almost all of these questions is yes, and that yes is due largely to the very successful work and service of, of George Washington. He established the working government that remains today. He served his nation in wartime and in peace and then in, in 1797, he announced his retirement from public life. He returned to his home, his beloved Mount Vernon, and sadly passed away only two years later. He became known as the father of the country, and when he died in 1799, he was eulogized by fellow Virginian Henry Lee with these words, quote, he was first in war, first in peace, and first in the hearts of his countrymen, end quote. So that was George Washington. Unlike George Washington, Abraham Lincoln was born to a very poor family in a one-room log cabin in Kentucky. He was an avid reader and was mostly self-taught with very little formal education. He did go on to law school and eventually became a lawyer in Illinois. 
He was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives and would later run for the Senate, the U.S. Senate. He lost that election, however, and returned to practicing law in Springfield, Illinois. He did not give up on a political life, however, and in 19, or 1860, 1860, he ran for a presidency and, to the surprise of many, uh, won that candidacy and became the 16th president partially because of his uh, views on slavery and his opposition to slavery. Soon after he took office, very soon after, within a month, several southern states seceded from the Union and the worst crisis in American history began, the, the launching of the Civil War. In his first inaugural address, just before the outbreak of hostilities, Lincoln said, quote, we cannot separate, the United States cannot separate. We cannot remove our respective sections from each other, nor build an impassable wall between them, end quote. He, or, he Lincoln, however, was wrong, because that's exactly what happened. There were many issues leading to the Civil War, such as states' rights, as I mentioned earlier, the power of the federal government, and the huge economic gaps that existed between the industrialized northern states uh, with, within the Union and the agricultural south that depended, that depended on the barbarous institution of slavery. Lincoln reflected heavily on the Founding Fathers' vision for America. He realized that as a nation we were not living up to the very principles on which our republic was established, namely that all men were created equal and were all equal before the law. On January 1st, 1863, uh, two years, almost two years after the beginning of the Civil War, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, effectively ending the practice of slavery in the rebelling states. He would go on to win a second term in office in 1864. The, the war itself lasted from 1861 to 1865. Lincoln's entire time as president the nation was at war. He never knew peace as a president. Yet when he stood before the nation to give his second inaugural address in 1865, he pleaded, quote, with malice towards none, with charity for all, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, for his widow and his orphan, to all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations, end quote. A little bit more than one month later, after giving this address, the man who urged reconciliation was dead, the victim of an assassin's bullet. These two giants in American history, Washington and Lincoln, offer such powerful examples as stewards of the people. One refused to accept more authority being offered to him, and, and the other held the nation together against all odds. They were not perfect men by any means. No man nor woman is. Washington, as I mentioned, kept slaves, and Lincoln made decisions that arguably lengthened and deepened a horrendously bloody civil war. Nevertheless, President President's Day gives the United States, or gives Americans, a time to reflect on these t uh, two heroic Americans and other presidents. And we've had good presidents, very successful presidents, and of course we've had those who were not exemplary leaders by any means. I think in the, in the positive category, in the, in the good category, most historians would argue that Woodrow Wilson Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Ronald Reagan, John F. Kennedy were among the most successful of presidents. Again, they were not uh, always successful all the time. Woodrow Wilson, uh, domestically, in terms of domestic policy in the United States, largely was not particularly successful, but he made an, a tremendous impact on international relations, including here in Romania. In the not-so-successful uh, category, 
We have Herbert Hoover, who, who saw the country into the Great Depression. Ulysses S. Grant, who, although he was a very successful Civil War general, um, presided over a, an administration that was very uh, corrupt. Lyndon Johnson, uh, although he made tremendous advancements uh, in the area of civil rights, uh, was led to defeat, essentially, by the, by the Vietnam War, and then also a breakdown in, um, in the civil rights arena in the United States uh, later uh, during the term of, of his tenure. And then Richard Nixon, of course, the only uh, president uh, who was removed or who left office uh, under a scandal. So what defines the differences between uh, these leaders? American author John Steinbeck once said, quote, Power does not corrupt, fear corrupts, perhaps the fear of losing power, end quote. In a democracy such as Romania, such as the United States, elected officials are chosen by the people to serve the people. They are responsible for the riches and the resources, the public health, security, and, and well-being of their societies. These are enormous duties. The authority to hand, handle these responsibilities can be an intoxicating cocktail. Once tasted, the fear of losing that authority can be shattering. Many people sadly will do anything to avoid that from happening and then fall to the temptations of corruption. Corruption is a poison to any democracy. Whether it be in the United States or Romania, corruption must be eliminated at all levels of public life in order for the nation to prosper both politically and economically. And this is an enormous challenge. I congratulate Romania for what it has done in the, in the past uh, several years to fight back hard against corruption, uh, but it's a, it's a fight that is never ending. It has to be sustained. And it's not a fight that only exists in Romania. There are many countries. Uh, your neighbors, uh, for example, uh, face serious uh, challenges with corruption. Uh, look to the north in U Ukraine or look to the east, to the Republic of Moldova. But then also the United States um, has a continuing problem uh, with uh, corruption. There are any number of former governors who have been uh, convicted and imprisoned uh, due to a corrupt uh, practice in, in office. Uh, a U.S. senator currently is under indictment for a corruption. Um, a U.S. president, as I mentioned earlier, left office uh, because of a corrupt uh, actions in, in office. Last year I witnessed something very remarkable in Bucharest and other major cities in, in Romania as tens of thousands of Romanian citizens came together in peaceful solidarity to fight corruption and demand change. I saw the signs in Bucharest reading Corruption Uchude Corruption kills, and I was especially impressed by the passion of, of those citizens on the, on the streets in Bucharest in early November. Many of you may have been a part of, part of those um, uh, demonstrations in Bucharest or Cluj, and you sought a brighter future for Romania, where the rule of law prevails and anti-corruption, the fight against corruption, is the norm. I hope those same protesters and much more will march again to the ballot boxes in June and November of this year when it is time to use their ultimate power, their vote, to put into place individuals who will serve as responsible leaders of this nation and stewards for its people. You are the new generation of Romania. So I ask, will you contribute to make Romania into the place that you want it to be, free of corruption and guided by the rule of law? Will you answer the call of service when your country needs you to set it on the path towards the bright future that is its due politically, economically, and socially? Will you join in this year's elections, ensuring that the right candidates will correctly represent the people and they will run and get elected? Will you one day be among those seeking office as a way to serve, as, to serve your country? Our sixth president, John Quincy Adams, 
who I think probably falls in the middle range of successful and unsuccessful. Nevertheless, was a very um, intelligent man, and he once said, quote, If your actions inspires others to dream more, to learn more, to do more, and become more, then you are a leader, end quote. I believe strongly that this room is full of such potential leaders only awaiting your, their chance. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention and your patience, and I very much look forward uh, to hearing your questions and the discussions ahead. Thank you.